Hello, 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 hello. Welcome, 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 welcome. So glad to have you all this evening. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, 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 hello. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. We're going to continue our teaching on hidden figures of the Bible. So thank you all so much for joining and inviting your followers and your friends. We're just going to give it a few moments. Welcome, 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 welcome. So glad to have you. Welcome, welcome. Yes, this is Grace Williams. Fresh oil, fresh oil. That's what we need in this season. We don't need anything stale and we don't need anything dry. <laughs> we need what is fresh. Thank you all so much for joining. I hope you're excited as I am with this teaching on hidden figures of the Bible. I hope, <laughs> I hope that you all have enjoyed um, these teachings for those of you who are new um, for the month of January and February. I've been going through the Bible finding different characters that sometimes we may overlook who add a lot of significance when we dig a little deeper. And if you missed any of these teachings, you can definitely go to YouTube and subscribe to my YouTube page, Mashani Allen. Hi, Janice. And then you'll be able to get the YouTubes as I produce them, as well as catch up on any of the YouTubes that I've done thus far. So this has been a good teaching so far. We've covered Stephen. We've covered Naboth. We've covered Lydia. We've covered the daughters of Zelophehad. And tonight we're going to talk about Nicodemus. And I consider all the names that I've just said to be hidden figures of the Bible. Because when it comes to the Bible, we have our key people whose names we use and we know their stories. But there are some other people whose stories we know or we need to get to know a little better. <laughs> and really understand the significance um, of their lives and the role that they played. And what they have to offer us if we just dig a little deeper. So invite your followers, invite your friends. We're going to give it just a few more moments. And if you have your Bibles, you'll just need, um, we're going to be in the book of John, actually John chapter 3. Welcome, 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 welcome. So glad to have you all. Thank you for already releasing the hearts. Just going to give it a few more moments. Thank you so much for joining. I'm excited about this teaching. Thank you. Welcome, Vida. So glad to have you. Okay, I don't do well with pauses. <laughs> so we'll get started. I'll let Grace play out. So we learn about Nicodemus. In the book of John, St. John chapter 3, is when we're introduced to him. And I'm going to read some scriptures and then I'm going to expand on them as we go through the teaching. And I'll be reading between the King James and the Amplified Version of the Bible. I'm going to start off in the Amplified Version. In verse 3, it says, now there was a certain man among the Pharisees named Nicodemus, hi Michelle, a ruler, a leader, an authority among the Jews. So this is the first introduction that we have of Nicodemus. And we learn that he wasn't just any man. He was a ruler, he was a leader, and he was a man of authority. In verse 2, we learn what he did. It says, who came to Jesus at night and said to him, Rabbi, we know and are certain 
that you have come from God as a teacher. For no one can do these signs, these wonder works, these miracles, and produce the proofs that you do unless God is with him. I think that that, that scripture is so key about Nicodemus because again, he was a leader, he was a ruler, he was a man in authority. So he wasn't looking for foolishness and he wasn't looking for fake. But when he met Jesus, he said, no man can do these miracles. No man can do these signs. No man can do these wonders or produce, excuse me, or produce these proofs unless God is with him. And that, that, what, that statement should make us think about our lives. Do we have proofs that let people know who don't really know us, but because of these proofs, they know that God is with us? Let's keep going. Verse 3 says, I'll read that in the King James Version. Jesus answered and said to him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, as I was reading and doing research before this teaching, what I found interesting was this. Jesus spoke about the kingdom a whole lot, but it's Nicodemus that he reveals that man has to be born again in order to see the kingdom. Prior to that, he would say the kingdom of God is likened to this. The kingdom of God is likened to that. But this, this, this Jewish leader who came to God by night was able to pull revelation, was able to pull knowledge, was able to pull wisdom by asking questions. Let me keep going. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Now, this is the thing. A lot of people feel as though Nicodemus asks a really stupid question. But for him, this is the first time of him understanding or even hearing about entering into the kingdom. And he used it in a natural way because he didn't understand the spiritual concept or the spiritual connotation. And I put in my notes, um, people at this time were associated with baptism, but not with birth. So even though he was, um, even though he was a Pharisee and he understood the word of God, he understood the letter, but it was through his conversations with Jesus that he began to understand the spirit. <laughs> his questions caused God to reveal and to disclose. So verse four, he asks about a man being able to be born again. Verse five, Jesus answered, barely, barely, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh and that which is born of spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, ye must be, be born again. So here we have this Jewish Pharisee getting, good evening, getting revelation, getting insight regarding the kingdom. Why? Because he chose to ask questions. I find it interesting that the more questions he asked, the more revelation he got. And many times, even in the, in the kingdom, we are discouraged from asking questions. We are discouraged from going deeper. We are discouraged for being inquisitive, but I consider Nicodemus to be a hidden figure of the Bible because he shows us the power of questions, but he also shows us the power of answers. Let me, there's a particular um, verse that I want to get to. Um, hold on. In verse 15, I'm going to skip. No, let me, let me keep going. Um, in verse 11, it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, we speak that we don't know, and we testify that we have seen, 
and ye, ye receive not our witness. Verse 12, if I have told you earthly things, ye believe not. How shall ye believe if I tell you heavenly things? And no man ascendeth up to heaven, but he that have come down from heaven, even the son of man, which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up. So this is the thing. Nicodemus asks one question, but look at this full discourse that Jesus is now giving him. One question to God can give us a download that doesn't just benefit us. It benefits generations to come. This full discourse is something that we study. This full discourse is something that we share. This full discourse is still being unveiled, un un unlocked, and even revealed to us in 2017. This man asked Jesus a question, and in turn, he found out that Jesus was going to be crucified. That wasn't the question that he asked, but in asking a question, he got more revelation than he even thought he was going to receive. It says, verse 15, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world, and I'm going to read this in the Amplified Version. For God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world that he even gave up his only begotten unique son that whoever believes in, trusts in, clings to, relies on him shall not perish, come to destruction or be lost, but have eternal everlasting life. And many of us know it in the King James Version, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that so whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Again, Nicodemus asks one question, but in this one question, he finds out that Jesus is going to be crucified and lifted up, but in him being crucified and lifted up is going to draw men unto God. He finds out that he finds out the level of God's love, that God will send his own only begotten son on behalf of a sin sick world. He found out all this information by asking a question. And another verse 18, it says, he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten son. So this is what I want to share. Now, prior to this conversation, Jesus spoke a lot about the kingdom and he shared a lot about what the kingdom was like. But this Pharisee received the key on how to enter the kingdom. He learned how we get eternal life. There are others who ask how to get eternal life, but it was Nicodemus who was told how belief brings eternal life. So I find that interesting because sometimes we can feel as though when we pose questions to God, this question has already been asked and someone else has already gotten the answer. But the thing about it is God is so vast. Revelation is so vast. Understanding is so vast. One person may have gotten a piece, but there may be another piece that God wants to reveal if someone would just ask the question. Now, I found interesting in my in my research, it says um, it said how how Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. And I know that this this thought process is going to bless many. One commentary said while others were asleep, he was getting knowledge. Now, I know that there are people who, why do you buy so many books? Why are you always studying? Why, 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 why? But it was his inquisitiveness. It was his willing to learn. It was his willingness to listen even to the hard thing that allowed him to receive so much revelation from Jesus. Again, he wasn't the one of the disciples. He wasn't one of the 12. He came to Jesus by night. 
Another thing that I want to say about Nicodemus and why I say that he's a hidden figure of the Bible is because he shows the manifestation of the scripture, which says, ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find. When he asked questions, he got answers. When he, when he began to seek for revelation, he got more than he was expecting. And what I want to say is many are discouraged and even shunned for having questioned, but this hidden figure shows us the power of questions and the power of answers. His questioning did not just benefit him, but generations to come. How many people quote John three sixteen? It didn't come from John. It came from Nicodemus. And it came to Nicodemus because he was willing to ask questions and not just one question. He continually asked questions. Even when Jesus was like, hey, um, that question, you really going to ask me that question? You a Pharisee, you know the word and you don't understand what I'm saying. He didn't he didn't allow when Jesus questioned him to stop him. He was so humble. He was like, look. I know I know the letter, but I need to know the spirit. And it's through you. I know I can learn the spirit through you because the stuff that you do, only a person who knows God can do these things. So how many people know the letter, but they're looking for us to move in the things of God so they can get to know the spirit of the letter? So I just had a few. Did I read all my notes? No, I didn't read all my notes. Um, let me see what else I had here. Another revelation that came to Nicodemus was he was, he was, he was able to hear Jesus say, he was able to hear that there's a distinction between the flesh and the spirit. There's a distinction between the flesh and the spirit. That was a revelation that was released to Nicodemus. Another thing about Nicodemus was that he was actually told the purpose of Jesus coming and why God sent him in the earth. And we find that out in verse five in, in the scripture we quote all the time. John three sixteen. for God so loved the world that he gave. He was able to hear from Jesus mouth what his mandate was. He was able to hear from Jesus mouth what his commission was. He was able to hear from Jesus mouth what his purpose in the earth was. And again, it's because he chose and postured himself to ask questions. So this is my question, because this teaching isn't going to be long, but I do consider Nicodemus to be a hidden figure of the Bible because much of the revelation that was given to him is revelation that still speaks to us today. And it's really the key that helps us to come into the kingdom. Again, many in many scriptures, when I looked up kingdom in the New Testament, it said how Jesus said the kingdom is likened to this and the kingdom is likened to that. But it was Nicodemus who actually got the key on how we can actually enter the kingdom before it was something that people were aware of. They knew it was something they were, they were supposed to be a part of, but Nicodemus was able to hear directly from Jesus, how we, including him and now us are able to enter in. So this is my question for you and looking at Nicodemus as a hidden figure of the Bible and seeing how much he was able to get from God, how much insight, how much revelation, how much knowledge, how much understanding he was able to glean from the father because he asked questions. This is my question for many. Hey, Lashiri, this is my question for you all today. And I really want you to ponder on this. What revelation is the father wanting to release if we simply ask? I'm asking it again. What revelation is the father wanting to release if we simply ask? My next question is this. What revelation will come when we choose to spend time with God. Again, what revelation will come when we choose to spend time with God? 
Now I've read earlier that one commentary said about Nicodemus, while others were asleep, he was getting knowledge. And my last question is this, what kingdom principles does God want to build upon and expand for this generation to be able to understand? Because when he spoke of the kingdom during Nicodemus' time, he likened it to things in their time, which helped them to understand. But there are things within our system, within our culture, within our society that the Holy Spirit and God himself can begin to reveal to us so we can help people be able to understand the kingdom in modern day language. Because some people don't, they they might not understand it um, just reading it through the Bible. But if we get into a place with God, if we choose to spend time with God, he he can begin to give us revelation, insight, knowledge, and downloads just like he did Nicodemus. And again, the knowledge that Nicodemus received didn't just benefit his system, didn't just benefit his time, didn't just benefit his culture, it actually benefits us still today because most people quote John 3.16. The last question I asked was this, what kingdom principles does God want to build upon and expand for this generation to be able to understand? That's the last question. So I hope that you all enjoy this teaching on hidden figures of the Bible and just be, be okay asking God questions. Be okay seeking, be okay asking, be okay knocking and not taking offense if the answer doesn't come you're welcome. If the answer doesn't come exactly as it was, um, exactly the way you think it was packaged, because some people, when they read John three, when they see the way that Nicodemus and Jesus interacted, some may feel as though Jesus was being harsh to Nicodemus, but what he was dealing with was a mindset and a culture because Nicodemus was a Pharisee. So he knew the letter. He knew the letter but he didn't know the spirit and he was trying to shift him from a, from, from the religious mindset into the kingdom mindset, which has the word and the spirit working together. So I pray that this teaching scope blessed you. I do see some people have joined. I apologize, but we are almost done with this teaching. You can certainly watch the replay. I've actually done, this is my fifth teaching on hidden figures of the Bible. Again, we've covered thus far, we've covered Naboth, we've covered Stephen, we've covered Lydia, we've covered the daughters of Zelophehad, and now we have just covered, um, we have just covered Nicodemus. And if you've missed any of these teachings, please go to my YouTube page, Mashani Allen, and subscribe. And I have a playlist which specifically says hidden figures of the Bible. I also wanted to make sure that I announced and that you were aware that I will be starting my spiritual beauty classes on March the 6th. The spiritual beauty classes are actually um, going to be online classes that will be done through a Facebook Live. And what they will include are teachings beginning on March 6th. It'll be 30 to, I'm sorry, 60 to 90 minute teachings, which cover concepts of beauty with the spiritual twist. And all of this information is on my website. If you go to MashaniAllen.com, I already have a tab set up called Spiritual Beauty Classes. So I hope that you're able to join me as your spiritual beauty expert. I will be your teacher and your host. And also I am the author of The Beauty of Holiness, A Makeover from the Inside Out. If you don't have your copy, you can purchase it on Amazon 
or any other platform which sells books. I love doing this teaching on the hidden figures of the Bible because many times we can feel as though our lives are insignificant, our lives don't fully play a role, our lives don't impact other people, when in actuality, you are a living, ripping, living, breathing ripple effect. What you do affects the present, what you do affects the future, what you do affects nations. So don't allow the enemy to make you feel as though you're insignificant because being a child of God, you are precious, you are one of a kind, and God certainly has a purpose and a plan for your life. You all be blessed and I'll see you next week.